Okay. <clears throat> so I'm Kwon Suche. Uh, I'll present our paper on automatically, automatically generating features for learning program analysis heuristics for C-like languages. This is joint work with Hak Ju-ho, Ki hong Ha, and Hong seok Yang. In static analysis, there are many engineering decisions. For example, which procedures should be analyzed in a context-sensitive way? The analyzer needs to manually uh, develop diverse heuristics uh, depending on our needs. Because coming up with such heuristics takes a lot of time with considerable efforts, data-driven static analysis aims at automatically learning various heuristics from the code base using machine learning techniques. This automation relieves the burden of the designer because the automated learning mechanism generalizes important observations on behalf of the human designer. This diagram shows what people expect from the data-driven approach, where the machine learning component nicely captures the important aspects of the analysis automatically. But in reality, the analysis designer must pave the way for such an automatic learning with intensive backbreaking labor. Specifically, one must design a set of so-called features for application of machine learning techniques. According to our own experience, this feature engineering work takes a lot of time with considerable efforts, require appropriate domain expertise, and even worse, the analysis designer must develop another set of features from scratch to target a different analysis. Previous data-driven approaches presented their uh, own features manually developed. For example, 45 features for controlling flow sensitivity and another set of 38 features for controlling context sensitivity. Features for choosing proper widening threshold, for selectively relational analysis, selective unsoundness, and even for context sensitivity that is presented in the previous talk. So we've identified that this feature engineering step is a major bottleneck in data-driven static analysis. So this observation motivated our research. So in this work, um, our goal is to automatically generate a set of features for application of machine learning techniques to build a cost-effective static analysis automatically. Okay, so before moving on to feature generation, let me exemplify how machine learning is applied in the partially flow-sensitive interval analysis. There are three queries in this example program. The first query is unproven by flow-insensitive analysis because the analysis says y can be zero. But it is proven by flow sensitiv sensitivity because right before the assertion, y becomes one. So in this case, flow sensitivity is beneficial. The second query cannot be proved even by flow sensitivity because we have no idea about the value from the external input. So in this case, applying flow sensitivity is a waste of resource. What about the third one? The third query can be proven by even by flow insensitive analysis because the value of W is always zero. So in this case, applying flow sensitivity is unnecessary. So in this example, we want to apply flow sensitivity <coughs> to the first assertion and then analyze the second and third ones in a flow insensitive way. We want to build a classifier that selects the first assertion only. After the classifier chooses the first one, we collect the variables x and y, which are required to prove the assertion, and then analyze, and then give flow sensitivity to those variables only. The key part here is to automatically build a classifier. The usual steps for building a classifier are as follows. First, we design a good set of features manually. Second, generate label data using the features and the analysis results and training programs. Finally, run an off-the-shelf classification algorithm to generate a classifier. But this procedure involves the manual work of feature engineering, so our, in this work, our goal is to replace the first step with an automated process of generating features. How can we generate features automatically? We highlight our key ideas before diving into the details. Our first key idea is to uh, capture the key reason using a program reducer. The reducer takes a program and a condition 
that flow sensitivity helps, flow sensitivity works, but flow insensitivity fails. And then it removes the irrelevant part of the program while preserving the condition. And so this resulting code snippet concisely describes a programming pattern where flow sensitivity helps. But the problem is, this reduced program is only specific to the original one. So our second idea is to properly generalize this reduced one to use it as a generic feature. We represent this program as an abstract data flow graph, and we call this abstract graph as a feature. When there comes a new program, we abstract the program using the same method and solve a graph inclusion problem in this abstract world, saying that this new program has this feature if the subgraph condition holds. We highlight our key results. Our approach generated around, around 40 features for each instance analysis. Our analysis built on top of the machine generated features struck excellent balance between cost and precision. For example, in the partially flow sensitive interval analysis, our analysis proved 80.2% of the queries from the difference between the two extremes, that is fully flow insensitive and sensitive analysis. But our analysis only doubled the cost of the most imprecise, that is fully flow insensitive analysis. Okay, now I'll explain in a little more detail our method for automatic feature generation. Our method has two key steps. First, capture the key reasons from the code base using a program reducer. Second, properly generalize the key reasons to build generic features. Our first step is to capture the, uh, from the code base the key reasons why increased precision is beneficial. How can we do this? Our solution is to uh, generate small programs using a program reducer. Specifically, we run a reducer on the original program and the query while preserving an invariant phi, which encodes the condition that the program in terms of the query is proven by flow sensitivity, but not by flow insensitivity. And so this resulting small program whose line of code is mostly 5 through 10, concisely describes why flow sensitivity is beneficial. In this example, the flow sensitive analysis guarantees that A becomes less than 3 right before the assertion. We call this program a feature program. Okay, the feature program captures an important programming pattern, but it cannot be used as a generic feature because it's only specific to the original program that it is reduced from. So our second step is to properly generalize this feature program and represent it as an abstract data flow graph. By abstract, we mean the program commands and its expressions are replaced by some abstract ones. For example, the program variables are replaced by symbol x, constants by a symbol c, and the comparison operators are abstracted too. We call this abstract graph a feature in the context of machine learning. But the main question here is, how much abstraction or generalization do we need? If you generalize little, the resulting graph is too much, too much tied to the specifics of the original program. If you generalize aggressively, the resulting graph may lose important information. We developed a search algorithm for automatically identifying the right abstraction level from the code base. Please read our paper for more uh, details. So far, we illustrated how we generate a feature on abstract data flow graph. The final question is, how can the abstract, abstract data flow graph actually serve as a generic feature? Let me explain uh, our feature checking method using a scenario where the original program is feature checked with its own feature. <coughs> we first represent the original program as an abstract data flow graph using the same abstraction level as in the feature and solve a graph inclusion problem in this abstract world. If the feature is a subgraph of the original graph on the bottom right, we say that the original program has the feature. But the problem, one hurdle here is that the 
original program has noise, that is, it includes program commands and expressions that are not related to the feature pattern. And so this subgraph condition doesn't actually hold. For example, the two pink edges in the feature do not exist in the uh, original graph. To avoid the false negative, we first take transitive closure from the original graph, and then solve the graph inclusion problem using this transformed graph. Why? The key intuition here is to make some indirect effect of removing the noise. We could run a reducer on the original program too, but it is too expensive to perform online. So instead, we just take transitive closure here. So finally, the subgraph condition holds, and this program is feature checked. Okay, um, we evaluated our approach using a static analyzer called Sparrow. Um, we used CReduce as a program reducer. We applied our approach to three instance analysis, partially flow sensitive interval and pointer analysis, and partial octagon analysis. We used the 60 benchmark programs. We evaluated the precision and recall of uh, the classifier learned with the automatically generated features. For example, in the partially flow sensitive interval analysis, our classifier showed 74.5% of precision and 75.8% of recall. We achieved similar performances in other two instance analysis too. Our analysis built on top of the learned classifier showed an excellent trade-off. For example, in the partially flow sensitive interval analysis, our analysis proved 80.2% of the queries from the difference between the fully flow insensitive and sensitive analysis. In terms of the cost, our analysis only doubled the cost of the most imprecise, that is fully flow insensitive analysis, while the uh, fully flow sensitive analysis is 46 times more expensive than the insensitive one. We achieved similar performances in all three instance analysis. We compared our approach with the existing approaches with um, manual feature design in the partially flow sensitive interval analysis and in the partial octagon analysis. The manual approaches showed wide variations in their performances. For example, 96.2% proof in the partial octagon analysis, but only 55.1% of proof in the partially flow sensitive interval analysis. On the other hand, our analysis consistently proved more than 80% of the course. We note that uh, these are just end-to-end -end comparisons, so uh, we couldn't make a clear conclusion because they take different approaches with different learning algorithms. Um, the automatically generated features actually conformed to uh, our expectations why increased precision is beneficial. We present the two most important features for each instance analysis. For readability, we show uh, feature programs instead of the abstract data programs. In the partially flow sensitive interval analysis, the two feature programs describe access to a consecutive memory region in a loop where the index is bounded by a constant. The flow insensitive analysis cannot prove the queries because it gets imprecise but flow sensitive one proved them. In the partially flow sensitive pointer analysis, we want to prove the absence of null dereferences. The two feature programs here describe a programming pattern where the buffer is null checked or strongly updated by the address of another variable. So only flow sensitive analysis can guarantee that there is no null dereference here. In the partial octagon analysis, the two feature programs describe an array access where the size is positive and the index is related to the size in a simple linear way. Only the octagon analysis uh, knows that the index is actually smaller than the size. Before summary, um, let me talk about some caveats in our approach. Our feature representation is expressive enough to uh, encompass most of the features manually designed, but I'm not saying that it's perfect. We cannot express some features, for example, some semantic features, such as 
the variables x and y result in finite intervals after analysis. Or properties of constants, such as 2 to the k type of integers, um, are important constants. Our feature representation cannot express such features because it's an abstract data program, abstract program study. So uh, one interesting uh, future direction would be uh, to explore uh, different kinds of analysis and study how our feature representation should evolve. I'll, I'll su summarize my talk. Manual feature engineering in data-driven static analysis has been a major bottleneck. So uh, in this work, we present a framework for automatically generating features for learning program analysis heuristics using machine learning techniques automatically. We first capture the key aspects of program analysis using a program reducer, and their, uh, their generalized graph representations serve as generic features. Okay, thank you.